Thank you everyone who's coming in to join me today. We have an outstanding and very special guest with us here, Joy Via. Thank you, thank you. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you so much. Hey, nice to see you, David. So for those of you who might not know, Joy famously wore a Make America Great Again dress to the Grammys, a very pro-Trump, obvious pro-Trump message. So first, I'd like to know what motivated you to do that? You know, I mean, I saw the hate and I saw the negativity against the president and being a conservative, being someone who voted for the president, who was really strongly into politics because of the president this time around and during the election, um, I said that we need to change the narrative and Hollywood thinks they own freedom of thought. Uh, Hollywood thinks they own us, you know, as artists. And I said, no, you don't. You can't tell me what to think or what to do and how to be. So I heard a lot of the negativity, the designer, Andre Soriano, who's a gay Filipino immigrant, big Trump fan, he designed the dress. I was said, let's just, let's just sort of, you know, be a rebel and say who we voted for and what we want to do is make America great again. Now, did anyone before you went to the Grammys in the dress, did anyone close to you advise you, hey, you know what, Joy, maybe don't do that? Yeah, well, I didn't tell a lot of people, to be honest, David. I barely told anyone that I was going to wear the dress. I told my husband, who actually advised me not to do it. I, I told my publicist. Actually, I didn't tell my publicist until the last minute. Um, I didn't tell my makeup artist. I didn't tell my best friends. I didn't tell anybody because I knew they would tell me don't do it because it's dangerous. You know, I could get beat up or, you know, ruin my career, be lambasted and destroyed. I mean, of course, they insulted me and they tried to, you know, de de you know, dethrone me, I guess you could say. But uh, I came back twice as strong. My fans came out. They supported me. My album went to number one on iTunes, Amazon. Google everywhere and billboard and so I'm happy I spoke my truth and I will continue to do that now did you have anyone uh, at the Grammys that maybe came up to you on the down low a little subtle and they're like hey we actually support the president too or hey we like that someone is here you know not just going along with the the group think did anyone come up to you and maybe whisper a few words of encouragement to you Actually, yes, a lot of people did. They sort of whispered, you know, sort of secretive, sort of like thumbs up, sort of, yes, I voted for him too. And um, we don't really speak out as conservatives, especially as Trump supporters. It's not like a thing because you know you're going to get blacklisted to be Republican. So for them to see me and say, oh, you're so brave. Thank you for doing that. Even the day of the Grammys was a big deal to me. It made me feel like I wasn't alone. And a lot of people have come out since then. Artists like Dream Machine, Kaya Jones, Ricky Rebel. Like a lot of artists have come out. Um, Gene Simmons in support of Trump and have said, thank you for your courage. I can now come out, which I'm happy about. So I'm a big believer in this thing called keyboard courage. And that's essentially anyone will say <laughs> anything when they're behind a computer screen and they don't have to worry about being face to face. And if I had to gamble, I would bet the reaction in person that night probably weren't a whole lot of critics to your face like there were on the internet. And I'm not, am I fair in that assessment? Oh, yeah. I mean, I get recognized on a daily basis. I was just out here doing Trump TV for the uh, campaign. I'm part of the campaign advisory board now. I'm very happy. And uh, I did a, a part of my job is to film the uh, Trump TV Real News episode that uh, Laura Trump produces and puts on and hosts. So I did that yesterday, should air today. And I got recognized on Fifth Avenue by some finance guys and they took photos with me. And the thing is, I do get some dirty looks. So I know that they recognize me and they're probably the haters, but the people that come up to me and talk to me are the fans, are the people who say, I'm a big fan of your music, thank you. I was at Fox News today and half the crew came up and said, can I take a photo with you? We love you. I get recognized all the time and it's for positive things. So even though there's death threats on my life, there's, um, you know, a lot of sort of scandalous things and horrible things people say. It's keyboard warrior all the way. I mean, I do have to have a security team. You know, security can be an issue at certain events. I uh, actually had to cancel doing Milo's free speech event for free speech week 
uh, because of security threats on my life and Kaya Jones, one of my best friends and a proud Trump supporter artist. We were going to open up for Steve Bannon, who was set to speak. We were headed to Berkeley tomorrow. And uh, now we say, no, we're going to stay in New York. We can't do that because there's just been too much dangerous threats on our life. And honestly, with the situation in Berkeley right now, we just feel like it's not the way to go. And management told us, like, we can't risk it. So we had to cancel. Well, let me let me ask you this. We have Hollywood actors, Hollywood elites that criticize the president, pretty much any Republican president, doesn't matter if it's George W. Bush or Donald Trump. They say obscene yeah. things and they don't have to have security details. No one's threatening their lives. So if you had worn a, a dress that maybe was anti-Obama in 2010, do you really think anyone would have threatened your life or is it only because you're a conservative? If it was anti-Obama, um, I, I mean, I'm sorry if it was so. pro-Obama. I'm sorry if it was pro-Obama. Oh, pro-Obama? Yeah, I was going to say anti-Obama, probably even more so. I probably wouldn't be speaking to you. But pro-Obama? Hell no. They would have loved me. I'd be on the co cover of Vogue right now. Are you kidding me? I'd be on, you know, uh, I'd be heralded as a beacon of black culture and excellence and beauty. And, and Ebony Magazine would love me. I mean, a lot of people in the black community push away black conservatives. And that's something that's not talked about a lot uh, because we're just sort of like, oh, they're just a tiny little portion of conservatism and black culture that they don't really matter or count. But the truth is there's a lot of black conservatives, there's a lot of African-American mixed race. I'm part Native American, I'm Italian American. And there's a lot of us that are conservatives, I'm sure as you know, who are in your friend circle, who are different colors and, and races and, and ethnicities and cultures. And we share the same pro-America belief. And the problem with mainstream media is they will never feature us, they won't show us, they refuse to talk about us. And so to them, we simply don't don't exist. So if I had worn a pro Obama dress, I'd be on the cover of Vogue right now. And that does really highlight the double standard that if you're a liberal, you can say and or do just about whatever you want. And if you're conservative, the yep. honest truth is you can't because people will threaten your lives. They'll try to destroy your business, a whole litany of right. different reasons. And it is quite sad. And that's why President Trump, as he often says, is trying to make America great again, which leads That's me into right. my next question about how you are on the Trump campaign advisory board. How did that come about? That's how did right. you get on that? Well, I've been talking to the campaign for about uh, six or seven months, and I've been meeting with them. It's, it's sort of been in the works for a while. I've been working with the campaign behind the scenes, and uh, they decided to make me an official campaign advisory board member which is incredible. So Laura Trump sort of, you know, said, we really want you to join us. And John Pence, who is uh, Mike Pence, our vice president's nephew, uh, are leading the campaign. So they're really good friends of mine. We've been talking. We've just been promoting the Make America Great Again message. And now I'm official member of Team Trump. So for me, it's, it's not just about 2020, which is a big push, but it's about setting the stage now to make sure that people know the good works of what's really happening, the real news. So part of my job is to be the face on in the media, to talk, to go on the news, to talk about it, and to be well informed. So I get emails, I get texts, I get data and information before many of the public does. So a lot of my tweets, you'll you'll hear it first from me. And um, I'm proud to do that. I'm proud to be a voice and a representative of the president in the media now and and also representing this movement that i truly truly believe in and how much of your daily schedule is dedicated to president trump's 2020 re-election well right now uh we're sort of doing the slow rise you know it's we still got some time but it's more about getting things known so that's the first step it always starts in the media the tweeting the, the information, and I'm still new to the official sort of side, you know, side of it. Um, but I can tell you that there's a lot of meetings going on, that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we're very excited to break very soon. There's a lot of uh, promotion of, of stuff that's just not being talked about and frankly being ignored by the mainstream media. The president, you know, was in the UN. I'm in New York right now. He was here speaking. Uh, the first lady was speaking, anti-bullying. I mean, you're going to see a lot more of those pro-America, pro-family messages coming out because the president sees that a lot of the American public 
are not getting the news they need to see. So for me, it sort of flows in with my day to day because I follow this news anyways. Now I'm just ahead of the curve and I get to talk to the campaign directly. And uh, I think I hopefully it becomes more of my day to day. I wouldn't mind right now. It's just enough that I'm able to handle it while being an artist, while being a singer songwriter, while continuing my career, and also while uh, being a political commentator in my own right about social issues, about the entertainment business. Fox has had me back very frequently. I'm very excited to do that. So I think you'll see a lot more, but right now there's a lot under the surface that's just about to bubble and rise to the top and you'll hear about it. Last question for you here, Joy. I've heard that yeah. you went down after Hurricane Harvey to Texas to kind of do as much as you could to help uh, help in any way you could raise money. And obviously we all know that what has happened in Texas and Florida has been absolutely horrific. But was there anything you saw down there with the victims, with the people? Was there any sign of strength, anything that gave you hope that when you looked around you said, hey, this was terrible, but we're going to be okay, we will rebuild? Yes. Well, me and my friend, my one of my best friends, Kaya Jones, were able to go down there in person. We created, we uh, uh, made, cooked 22,000 meals um, over that week, actually helped in that one day. And it was 195,000 meals in a week to deliver to first responders, to people who needed it. Many of the police officers, the firemen, the, the medical officers hadn't eaten since they got there. So we were able to deliver food to them and the victims from the hurricane in Houston. And really, you know what touched me the most is even during this devastation, they've lost their lives basically, like what they built up as their lives. They're still alive, but they don't have a home. They don't, many of them lost family members, their pets, their photo albums, everything that makes up their life is gone. And yet they were helping each other. I saw neighbors who had lost completely everything to, due to the floods, helping the next neighbor, helping get them out of the house, helping them get on boats, get food. and. That was incredible because they were not victims, they were victors. And I'm happy to say we raised $3 million to help those victims from Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Irma, and now the money is still going to Hurricane Maria because Puerto Rico got hit very, very hard. So they also wanted me to let the media know in Houston that they are not racists, black, white, Asian, whatever color they are, they were helping each other. They said, please let everyone know we're not racist down here and we don't want that news story getting out. We love each other. We are a community. And I think the point, that final point you just made uh, right there, excuse me, is very important because if you looked at the pictures, if you turned on the cameras, you saw men and women of all, all colors and almost all certain religions helping each other. You'd see an adult carrying a, carrying a child didn't matter. Right. They were Americans. They needed help. Politics at that That's moment right. couldn't have mattered less to those people. Um, so That's right. I'd like to thank you, Joy, from, for coming in and hanging out with us today with our audience. And you yeah. can follow Joy. Joy, give us your Instagram and Twitter handles, would you please? Yeah. On Instagram, I'm at Joy Villa. On Facebook, I'm Joy Villa on tour. And on um, Periscope and Twitter, I'm at Joy underscore Villa. And JoyVilla.com. All right. So so if you're interested uh, in learning more about her from what you saw today, and she's a great guest, great interview, and she's a fascinating person to look into, hop, o hop on over to one of her social media accounts and you can find everything you need. And I'd like to thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks a lot.